Hey everyone and welcome to a new video about exception handling in Java. In this video we're going to learn about 5 best practices that you should follow when you're playing with exceptions in Java. So let's jump into it. The first best practice that you need to follow is to always remember to close resources when working with exceptions. So let's take a very simple example to see how this actually works. Let's say you want to read data from a file in a streaming-like fashion. For example, because the file is too big and it doesn't fit into the memory and you want to read data in a streaming way. So you decide to use any class that implements uh, input stream. Of course, we're going to use file input stream for example and this class takes a file object in the constructor parameter which of course takes the file path in the constructor now this constructor throws a file not found exception and we need to to handle this exception because it is a checked one so we decide to do that by using the try catch now usually a common mistake when working with those resources is to open the stream reading the data doing any kind of operations on it and finally closing the stream right this close operation also throws an io exception so we need to add this to the catch chain now the big problem with this approach is that if an exception gets thrown in this logic this can be many method calls or any classes involved here so any logic that goes here and throws an exception will direct the code either to this catch close if the exception is handled right if the exception type is specified here or the exception gets unhandled and is propagated up into the stack trace and the problem with this is that the stream will remain open and if this whole operation happens multiple times then we're going to have multiple streams which remain open right and this quickly can become a resource problem because usually each stream has a file descriptor allocated and other operating system data structures you may easily run out of memory or run out of file descriptors or you know any kind of resource issue that you're going to hit here so in order to solve this we got a few options the first one is to always add a finally block here on any try catch that uses some resources and in this finally block you need to make sure to close the stream now of course this solution is a bit ugly because closing the stream requires the fact that you should have the variable accessible to this block Right, so it needs to be declared outside of the try catch scope and also initialized right with something like null right so we need this because the the stream variable needs to be accessible to the scope and also apart from that we need to handle io exception because the, the close is uh, throwing it right so if you don't want to use the throws clause in the method header which is the recommended way you have to use the try catch uh, construction as well here in the final block the reason we should use the final block is because it's always called no matter if an exception is handled or thrown or not you know so that's really important that we should keep this in mind so when working with exceptions and using resources we also need to make sure to close and deallocate the resources basically to be able to make sure we're not uh, hitting any resource limit the elegant solution that we have here is to use a construction which, which is called try with resources which means that in the try block we can basically declare the actual resource here inside those parentheses and inside this try block we can basically use the stream and do any kind of processing on it right we can remove the final block here now the nice thing about this is that you don't have to care about closing the stream because this construction already does this for you so at the end of the try catch block or even if an exception is caught or not the close method will always be called on this stream and this happens because the input stream interface implements closable which is another interface that defines resources which can be automatically closed as you can see this interface has the the only method on it which is the close method that throws an IO exception so if you want to create your own resource which can be closed and use it in a try with resources block you just have to implement the closable interface and that's it so always use try with resources when you got any resource that needs to be closed to avoid any resource issue down the road right so that's best practice number one best practice number two is to always catch the most specific exception first so let's say we got this very simplistic example right which is the exact same one that we saw previously the ide already helped us because th this code was generated automatically by using the intellij idea features right so it already placed here the most specific exception that this constructor method thrown now of course you can 
in your code you can do something like this, right? To catch an exception which is higher in the hierarchy on top of your specific exception, right? You can also catch throwable. The reason you shouldn't do this is because the specific the exception is, the more information you get about the cause that generated that exception. And this is really helpful for you in order to debug the root cause of that exception, right? So always catch the most specific exception first and also propagate it and do anything with it, but try to be as specific as possible when catching exceptions. Number three, don't catch throwable. Throwable is the base class for all the exceptions. And the reason you shouldn't use it in a catch clause is because it is the base class also for the exceptions which concern JVM specific errors. In other words, all the exceptions which derive from the error class, right? So if you go to the error class and we just expand all the classes which derive from it, we can see that we got exceptions like assertion error or internal error. Those things are related specifically to the JVM itself, right? For example, out of memory error. If you're catching out of memory error, the, your application can't do anything about it, can't actually handle it properly, you know, because the reason that caused the exception is outside of scope of your application, right? It is a deployment problem, it's a memory or resource problem, right? So it doesn't really make sense to catch those types of exceptions because they are not actionable in any way from inside your application, right? So never catch throwable. Number four, don't swallow exceptions. So let's say we got this exception back here. Swallowing exceptions means that you're doing something like that. So you're catching an exception and inside that block, you're adding some decisional or any kind of um, logic which is not related to the exception at all. This doesn't have any value, right? Because the, the reason you catch the exception in the first place is to do something with it, either propagate it up in the stack trace or handling it in any way. But doing anything that doesn't have any connection with the exception, it means that you are basically losing the context that generated that exception, which may lead to further bugs in the future and also, and also other scenarios that will make the debugging really, really harder. Now, the last and the most important best practice, in my opinion, is related a bit more to a design level approach when playing with exceptions. And it's known in the industry as throw early, catch late. So what this means is that when you get an application with multiple layers, you should throw the exception as early as possible. The logic being that you should throw the exception as close to its origin as possible. Right? So this is really important because in this way, you're going to get the right context for that exception. You should catch the exception late, which actually means that you should treat the exception where you got the enough context about it. You know, that's the whole idea. So let's say we got an application with uh, four layers. Layer one is the, the lowest, closest to a specific resource, let's say. If you got an exception that's being raised on layer one, you should propagate the exception app and eventually add context around it in order to add more information to the handling decision for that exception. And finally, when you get enough context, you should just handle the exception and take an application level decision. For example, the application cannot be loaded or um, the user needs to get this error message, you know, things like that. So you should propagate the exception up until you reach the decisioning layer, which needs to tackle the exception, right? And I'm not saying here that you should uh, treat the exception on the UI level all the time, right? It really depends on the abstraction of your application and the way it is structured. Usually you shouldn't get out of the abstraction areas of your application, right? So let's take a more real example, right? So let's say layer one is a configuration file reader, which is just a class that reads a configuration file in XML or CSV or any other format from the local disk, right? Let's say something goes bad and this file gets deleted in the middle of a read operation and an exception is raised. We got a layer two, which is a configuration processor, which is reading the configuration and loading some data structures into memory. And this class might not be the right one that should take the application level decision, right? So it just adds more context into the exception by let's say creating another exception class, which is custom one, and includes the original exception as a field into that class. And then it propagates the exception up by just rethrowing it or letting it propagate naturally until it reaches the next layer, which let's say is the application loader chain, right? And this layer might be the one which has the proper context to say the application cannot be loaded, right? Because the configuration file is broken. That example is just for you to get an idea on how the abstractions may work here. 
And also layer four can be something like an application initializer, right? Which is on top of the application loader chain, but it's concerned with, with other initialization procedures apart from this uh, configuration loading. All right, guys. So those were five best practices for exception handling in Java and also in any other language. They are uh, applicable in, in other contexts as well. So they are not so specific to Java. If you like this video, please hit up like and subscribe button and let me know in the comments below if you have other ideas for videos or if I miss something, I'm more than happy to catch up with you in the comments section below. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.